Welcome back. Well, this morning we touch base with Tobago and in studio we understand that Kelvin Charles, Chief Secretary of the THA, joins us by Skype and this morning we'll be chatting about some issues plaguing Tobago and the way forward for Tobago. Mr. Charles, welcome. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Verna. Good morning. Good morning to Trinidad and good morning to Tobago. All right, so uh, how would you describe, first of all, you know, coming out of the carnival season, how would you describe Carnival 2018 for Tobago? I think that um, it was an improvement over last year. In fact, I attended many of the activities, and I am, in fact, pleased with the levels of participation as well as the levels of creativity uh, that I saw. So in spite of the challenges, especially with some of the budget cuts, you were particularly pleased that creativity became the order of the day, in a sense, to, to, to work around those challenges. Well, you're absolutely right. And indeed, I think we had uh, a greater participation of bands and so on um, this year than last year. So it's particularly interesting that in the face of a downturn, so to speak, we had more persons participating. And in fact, as I indicated, reflecting a higher level of creativity. All right. Now, when we're talking about issues facing Tobago or plaguing Tobago, you know, at the top of the list, you might think, you know, the air and sea bridge issues. I'd like to talk about the impact that this has had on the carnival, and not just the carnival, but the business community in Tobago, and not just for the past couple of months, but, but you know, even a year now. Well, there has been some impact, and we would acknowledge that. But even before I go further, I must in fact commend uh, Carl for the role they played over that carnival weekend. Um, I am not aware at this time that those who had confirmed bookings on the sea bridge were unable to come to Tobago. As a matter of fact, one person was reported to have said they never had it so good the ability to pay $50 and to come to Tobago by plane. And at the same time, getting your vehicle being transported from the airport to the seaport to collect your vehicle. So I think um, Carl's intervention um, was extremely useful and they need to be commended. Now, generally, we have agreed that there would have been some impact over the years. Um, well, over the months, rather, um, in respect of the business community, because persons who are traveling, especially in respect of domestic tourism, um, requires some level of predictability as far as going and coming is concerned. And, and that is a fact, because I, in fact, would have met a couple of people who said to me, they like coming to Tobago, but the unpredictability would have affected their planning. So I know there was some impact there. However, because of the nature of the Tobago's economy, where uh, the Tobago House of Assembly is in fact the main kid and therefore would have provided opportunities, whether we're talking direct or indirect employment, we were able to weather the storm. That notwithstanding, I have asked the Division of Tourism culture and transportation to do an analysis of the travel to see what the numbers are like, as well as to do a survey of both the hotels and the guest houses so that we can ascertain the impact that may have been generated. All right. Well, that was actually my, my next question. Now, there have been many outcries by Tobago businesses and many others following the you know, sea, sea and air bridge challenges. Have there been any discussions in terms of compensation for, for some of these businesses? No, there has not been any such uh, conversation. And as you would realize that there is some element of risk involved in entrepreneurship. Um, but we have had no conversation directly in respect of that. All right, now there has been talk in the media recently about a new Tobago airport terminal. Any update on this? Well, the facts are that, yes, a firm decision has been taken. A site has been agreed upon. Um, an oversight committee has been put in place, a committee of four, 
Tobago has two representatives on that committee. The next step, as I understand it, is the sourcing of funds. Now, I, I would have preferred, one second, I would have preferred um, to go by way of, of a loan. That would have been more predictable and, more, and, and a quicker solution. But um, the preference is to go by way of private sector support in respect of capital. So that what is happening now is the preparation of an RFP to facilitate that process. All right, so earlier in our program, we were talking about sustainable development. And I understand that a committee has been set up to advance phasing out of polystyrene foam products in Tobago. And as, as we know, these products are well, you know, banned in many areas of the world due to legislation and that kind of thing, even Guyana, for instance. Well, they are not environmentally friendly, as we know, and they pose threats to animals and fish, etc. When do you foresee this becoming a reality, or where are we with this, this move? Well, as you know, the Executive Council last year would have passed a motion um, indicating that the Tobago House of Assembly would lead the way in the fa phasing out of that uh, stuff. Uh, simply because, you know, we do not have the legislation, and therefore, for the, at this time, it has to be moral suasion. It has actually been handled under the Division of Infrastructure Quarries and the, the Environment. They would have established a broad-based committee to look at the, the process. My information is that committee has since submitted its report and that the division will be taking steps to act on the recommendations of that report. In the meantime, however, we have had general conversation with the Ministry of Planning um, to see how we can collaborate and dovetail our arrangements so that at the end of the day, there will be some level of unison in respect of Trinidad and Tobago. But we have started the process here in Tobago. All right. Now, we, we also understand that it, an interactive museum in uh, Fort King George was started sometime last year. How has the response been so far? And, uh, you know, when are these shows scheduled, et cetera? Well, the response has been overwhelming. Um, what is happening is that it is used primarily for domestic uh, tourism as well as... Um, foreign tourism. The plan, however, over the medium to long term is to outsource the arrangement so that a private cultural group can take responsibility for it and manage it going forward. Because as you would appreciate, the THA ought not to be involved in, in everything, in too many of the um, developmental act activities. But of course, we are starting it, and we are giving people the opportunity to take it over. All right. And do you have to make reservations? Uh, what is the process for booking a spot and cost, etc.? Well, I, I can't tell you the cost at this time, but there is no need to make reservations. Okay. All right. Now, I understand also in the area of education, uh, there is a new curriculum for students who did not really perform so well in the SEA exam or display that level of literacy or numeracy uh, skills. Could you tell us about the initiative in terms of, you know, providing us with an update on it and have students uh, begin to, to utilize this program so far? Well, we could back up a bit and to let you know that it was a deliberate strategy because what would have happened in the past is that students would have been dispersed among the various secondary schools. And in my respectful view, that was not an optimal position. So this year, we had 82 st two students. I therefore determined that we will use two schools, one at Roxborough and, and, and one at Signal Hill, 41-41, um, in terms of the distribution. The idea being that most of these students are basically homogeneous in respect of their abilities, and therefore it would be much easier from a pedagogical standpoint to treat with them educationally. Um, so 
part of the process, of course, must be you moving the students from the known to the unknown. And therefore, the curriculum as it established at the secondary level would have been too much for them. So we would have created a transitional curriculum. And it is so structured so that once the students begin to show the kinds of progress that one anticipates, they can seamlessly be moved into the mainstream. The last report I have, have gotten on that is that for the most part, the students are doing very well. As a matter of fact, very early in the process, in the first term, I had to advocate caution because I was told that some of the students had begun to excel and that it was felt that they can move on. And I said, no, take it easy. Because what we don't want is to create a situation that we're trying to prevent in the first place. So um, that program is going well. The program is also extended to the point where we have um, school support or student support officers um, paying regular visits to those students to ensure that their social and familial issues are being managed in a way that, that does not affect adversely their performance. And indeed, I have also taken the decision that um, each child will be assigned to a police youth group in his or her area, thereby ensuring that in respect of discipline and so on, um, we are keeping tabs on these children. So that, that, that is going extremely well. It's an initiative of which I am proud. And my expectation is that we would operate as if it were a longitudinal study so that we will track these students over their four years, five years in secondary school to see the results at the end of the day. All right. Now, let's switch a little bit to construction and housing. Uh, we've heard that $9.1 million was spent for home construction and repairs. And uh, what are the criteria for these grants and can anyone apply? Yes, um, anyone can apply, but of course there are limits in respect of your salary. There, there is a salary cap that is in respect of the grant. And of course, you must either own the land or you must have um, access to the land by way of the owner providing you with a, a letter or certificate of comfort or, or something to that effect. And once our officers visit and determine that there is a legitimate need and funds are available, we will so disperse. All right, so I'd like to talk a little bit now about um, information and technology. I understand that TSTT embarked on a joint venture to establish a new Tier 3 center in Tobago. What is a Tier 3 data center and how important is it for the development of Tobago in taking it forward? Well, it's a technology that allows for storage, mass storage of data and so on, as well as to facilitate communication services to various entities. And arguably, in, in, in an area where you're moving to develop, and in a technological area, such a facility um, is absolutely nece necessary. So we have embarked on that joint initiative because technology is one of the ways in which we would increase productivity as well as e efficiency. I can say to you as well that we have another facility that will make use of that. Um, that is our technology center right now at Signal Hill that has been repositioned to engage a number of technological training from abroad so as to equip our residents with the skills required for them to compete in a global economy. Now, as we seek to act, attract investment, be it for, for, uh, foreign or, or domestic, the idea is that communication services will be required, including storage, retrieval, um, as you call backup data, and that kind of thing. And we must be able to demonstrate that that infrastructure is available in Tobago um, as part of one of the attractions. In addition to which, 
um, given the fact that we are, in a sense, in a hurricane zone, those countries in the Caribbean can access that facility in respect of backup storage and so on. So that in terms of disaster, they can recover their data much quickly, uh, much more quickly than before. All right. So uh, when we started our conversation, you know, we spoke about the A and C bridge issue. As we wrap this interview, I'd like to hear your, your closing comments, even if you can provide us uh, the latest update on the A and C bridge. Well, the air bridge is working fine, you know, all things being equal. But I can say two things to you. One is that a committee is about to be put in place to a joint committee, that is, between the two, Tobago House of Assembly and and Carl to monitor the efficacy of the air bridge, particularly in relation to the new procedures that they have implemented. Um, secondly, um, we are right now putting together a proposal um, to submit to the Honorable Minister of Finance um, as an option for the operation of the air bridge. In respect of the sea bridge, well, the solutions have already been outlined. As you know, the spirit is supposed to come back on stream shortly. The express will then go on dry dock, and the new boat is expected to arrive to the end of um, April, I'm told. And therefore, this will ease the challenges um, that we are currently experiencing. But more than that, the board of the Port Authority, um, we have had initial conversation uh, with a view to determining how we can get to the point where the Tobago House of Assembly assumes greater responsibility for the operational management of the sea bridge. Um, there was to be a board meeting in Tobago in January. That has been postponed. But um, the idea is that the process in respect of a conversation has begun, and we had to deepen that conversation with a view to arriving at a mutual, mutually acceptable agreement as to how we proceed on that basis. Uh, Mr. Charles, closing comments, what can the people of Tobago look forward to for 2018 and beyond? Well, I think that there is great hope for Tobagonians in, for the rest of 2018 and beyond, um, simply because of the kind of program that we have outlined. Um, as you may know, our core vision really represents um, a situation where we see and we shall emphasize agriculture, um, tourism, light manufacturing, and some specialized services. And we are taking steps to do all of those things so that in this year, for example, one expects to see um, a ramping up of all of those areas, agriculture, for example, because we have since established a standing committee on food production and agriculture to be chaired by myself. Um, tourism, as you know, we have established a Tobago Tourism Agency, and that is taking off. As a matter of fact, recently they had a meeting with the stakeholders, and the stakeholders seem to have been quite pleased with the plan because they would have had an input into the plan going forward. And in fact, one of the stakeholders um, said quite categorically that it is not um, an agency plan per se, but it is a Tobago plan designed to take tourism in Tobago forward. So already we're beginning to get the levels of buying and collaboration required to take the island forward. And in areas of education, of course, we are doing that. I would have indicated some of the initiatives so far. Um, next month, we shall open or establish a teacher's development center, uh, rather a professional center, so as to provide teachers with the opportunity to upgrade their skills as well as to engage in conversations about best practices. We have that um, coming. Um, in respect of construction, there um, is a host of um, construction activity that will be taking place in the next couple of months. So that I think the future is bright. We have engaged in massive training 
Um, last year, for example, over 700 um, persons would have been graduated out of the community development um, vocational initiative. We expect that to, uh, those numbers to continue as we seek to empower our people here in Tobago. We're going to take that to the next level as well to ensure that we arrange um, uh, markets for, for them and um, conventions where buyers and sellers can meet. So, so there is a range of positive possibilities, Verna. Um, as a matter of fact, I wouldn't be surprised if you ask to be transferred to Tobago um, <laughs> next year and the year after that. I would not mind. I would welcome that opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Calvin Charles, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us this morning. Definitely a pleasure. Thank you very much. We take a short break and return with more. Stay tuned.